done what we did today, um, get to the championship game after losing the first game, and, and we just had to expend too much energy. Okay, hey, we'll go to questions, please. Use the raise hand feature for questions. Start with Patrick Mason, please. And I got to unmute this coach. Uh, just how proud are you of the guys? Like, you know, you, like you mentioned, you come from the losers bracket to do this and to just the resiliency, you know, a couple extra inning games and just to bounce back and re really fight throughout all the whole week. Yeah. The amount of time we were up here uh, this year is the most that we've ever been up here. I mean, I don't think any team's going through what, what we went through, you know, uh, extra inning first game, um, second game, you have a, over a four hour rain delay. Uh, guys had to battle for behind, getting down 6-5 to come back, win that game. Um, then the UCF game, we had a day off, uh, but then the UCF game, I think, went 13 innings um, where we had the lead in the ninth, and UCF tied it up, and we had to walk it off in the 13th. And then you got a doubleheader the next day, and for our guys to show up, and, you know, Sailor was tremendous, and then the bats get hot. Um, but like I said, today, they just, they didn't, you know, as much as we tried to get them going and to dig deep, um, they just couldn't find that extra gear. Um, you know, if I had to re do it over again, I probably would have played some different guys, which, um, you know, I just couldn't do because they, the guys that got us here needed to be on the field. Go next to Steven. I go, please. Hey coach, this may have been asked, had some internet issues, but did you get an explanation on the second base or Riley Johnson play at second base it looked like he may have been safe and um, how tough of a call was that um you know I saw it and uh you know after the game because everybody was saying he was safe and and I saw it and uh it, it's too close they're not going to overturn a call like that um Riley's awesome but we got to get the bunt down in that situation um you know put us in a bind and I didn't want to bunt for with two strikes um but Hey, look, if we're going to go down, we're going to go down swinging. And, and Riley Johnson's one of the best base stealers uh, in the country. And um, the pitch was in the dirt. The guy did a really good job picking it um, and made a good throw. So they made more plays than we did. So my hat's off to those guys. Next one to Gary Smith, please. Yeah, Coach, uh, Tulane obviously struggled throughout the year, but they gave you a really tough series in, in, in Greenville what do you see from this Tulane team now that, that, that they weren't showing earlier in the year? Um, you know, when, when we saw them in Greenville, I don't know, remember exactly when that was, but, uh, you know, we had to play three games in one day, um, which uh, it makes the level of competition a lot closer when you play multiple games in one day. They did swing the bats really well against us and Castro was really well, pitched really well against us in the second game. Um, so, um, do I think they're whatever a 2019 win team, 20 win team? No, I mean when they were in Greenville, I think they got their 13th win against us. So uh, I think I told somebody that's the best 13 win team I've ever seen. So um, they definitely have more talent than what their win total is, and that's not a knock against Jay. That's not. Please don't run with that and take that. I like Jay. I think Jay's a good coach. I just don't know why they haven't won more games because I think they have some talent over there for sure. We'll go to Patrick Mason. Yeah. Coach, when you guys are on the road like this, you know, you're probably the first time all year, you're, you're an entire week, you're in the hotel together, you're hanging out, you guys are are battling tough. What does that do for just this group to maybe come together? You know, I, I don't know. What, what have you seen out of the guys just being able to hang together for this entire week? Well, we've been in Florida since uh, Wednesday of the prior week. So we've been here, I think that's 11 days, if my math is accurate. So, um, the guys have done a really good job. I mean, there was some kind of bug going around that uh, I told you guys, AMAC, you know, was throwing up and having diarrhea. Um, you know, uh, Sailor had it one day. Uh, Charlie Hodges had it today. Um, so a lot of guys fought through a lot of different things. I mean, like I said, Wilcoxon caught every inning of this entire gauntlet of a week. So um, I'm just proud of our way of our guys, just the way they competed and they represented East Carolina University. Next one from Mark Keplinger, please. Hey, Coach, how do you plan on regrouping for the regionals next week? Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to regroup. We're going to give them some time off, but we've won 45 regular season games and won the regular season. So there's not any regrouping going on. No, we're a really good baseball team, and we've proven that for the entire year. Back to Steven, please. 
Coach, what, what do you think about y'all's chances to potentially host with 45 wins and a regular season title, or, or do you not have it a, a strong opinion on it either way? I have a strong opinion on it, but, you know, I'm not on the committee. Um, you would know this better than me, I go, but I don't think we've ever had 45 wins at this point in the season since I've been the head coach at East Carolina. Maybe in 19, I don't think so, but um, – you know, our conference RPI as a whole this year, for whatever reason, was so bad. But if you look at our non-conference RPI and our non-conference strength of schedule, we did everything we could do to put ourselves in a situation. As Butch Thompson told me, the head coach at Auburn, we're on the subcommittee of the regional thing, said, hey, Cliff, you shouldn't be embarrassed with a 24 RPI because if you're not in the SEC, how would your RPI be better? And uh, look, we've done everything we could to put ourselves in that situation. Um, unfortunately, we don't get to vote on it. So we'll play wherever they want us to play. But, um, you know, I really think our guys earned to play in Greenville with 45 wins and a uh, regular season conference championship and our non-conference RPI. Okay, we'll take last one from Gary Smith, please. Yeah. Yeah. T.O. Banks, who really struggled earlier in the year when I think went 11 for 21 in the tournament, had three singles against you in the first three bets. How much of an issue, a problem is he going to be for whoever Tulane faces in the regional, the way he's playing right now? Yeah, he's, he's a really good player. You know, we, we were happy that he hit singles off of us. You know, it's kind of a reverse split where, you know, he actually sees right-handed pitching better than he does uh, left-handed pitching. So, uh, we felt like we had a good matchup with Root, and he hit a couple balls off the cap. I mean, the one in the four hole, um, Starling got to, but it's just off the cap, and he's a good runner. So uh, he definitely poses a problem for anybody that, uh, you know, is pitching against him. Thank you. Coach Garvin, thank you for your time today and this week. Good luck in the regional. Thanks.